In autumn of last year, I did a three-month-long internship at a photography gallery. It's actually much more than that, but I'll explain that later in the video. And in today's video, I want to tell you the story about that time and the experiences I was able to gather. I want to make this video and share my experience with you because I think it's important to know the different job opportunities that exist. I'm not sure if it's just me, but not long ago I had barely an idea of what jobs existed in the photographic field. I basically thought that if I want to make my money with photography I have a few choices to pick from. I can become a freelance photographer and shoot weddings, commercial photography and such, or I could work in a marketing agency or a commercial production house as the in-house photographer. However, as much as I love photography, I'm not really sure if that is the kind of stuff that I personally want to pursue. And so recently, I got to work a pretty different job in the field of photography, one that I hadn't thought about before, and this opened my mind to the idea that there are probably so many more photography-related jobs that I just haven't discovered yet. And so this video here is just me contributing to this list of jobs in the photography space so that maybe I can show you a possibility you didn't know about yet, just like I didn't a couple months ago. From the beginning of my studies in uni, studying multimedia art with a focus on film, I knew that in my one before last semester I will be required to do an internship for at least three months. This job will have to be in some way related to my studies because of course the purpose of this semester is to gain working experience in the field that I am studying. Up until a couple months before the internship, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, and so as the time was coming closer and my friends were applying for various jobs, I already knew I had to get on with it and find something. I was in the lucky position of having had work experience prior to my studies because the first time I applied for the uni I got rejected and so I spent a year working as a video producer in a marketing agency. This was a huge advantage in my opinion because that meant I already knew what work is like in this kind of a job and that incentivized me to look for a job in a different field to gain varying experiences. But apart from that, I had also noticed how over the two years that I was studying, I found more admiration for the artistic side of film and photography and felt less attracted to the idea of doing commercial work, and so I decided to look for a job that is more in the artistic field. After some thinking, some researching and reading through the internship experiences of previous students, I found a lead. I decided to ask a professor in my uni if I could just do the internship with him. I knew that he does some commercial work, but I also knew that he does a lot of artistic work, which is the part I was more interested in. He agreed. However, due to the lack of work since the health situation around the world, he told me that he can't really give me enough to do, and therefore he wanted me to work in this local photography gallery as well, which he is a member and curator of. This gallery was actually my second option in case he'd decline, and now I sort of got both at once. And so that was settled and work was to begin in September. So in this video, I'll be concentrating on the work I did in the gallery because that was the work that felt quite eye-opening to me as a form of work with photography that I didn't know about. September arrived and I got introduced to the team at the gallery and over the next couple weeks I got to find out more about the photo wolf as it is called and what it actually is. The gallery I knew is basically just the front end of what is more accurately described as an association. They call themselves an association for author photography, meaning photographic artists. The association is a centre for photographic education, a place for artists to come together, a workspace and a production house for their own exhibitions which are presented in the gallery that I had mainly known. Additionally, they are an archive, so they have a lot of old photographs neatly organised and stored in a professional manner so that they last as long as possible. And so what I found so interesting was the work that I was able to do with them because it wasn't really what I was expecting and I got to learn about this whole new field of work in the artistic photographic space. Now, let me go over a couple jobs I did in that internship to show you what it was like. The first job I was introduced to was arguably the most obvious and least interesting being the gallery receptionist. This is basically being the person who open and closes the gallery in its opening times and during the open time I had to do a couple things to keep the place intact and clean and for the visitors I was available for any questions or if they wanted to buy a photography book. 
I was soon also given some other jobs that I personally found more interesting. One was some simple work that was required for the upcoming exhibition. There were about 20 prints that still needed to be framed, and so I was just framing one photograph after the other, which, spoken out loud, sounds quite boring, but I actually enjoyed it. I think what I liked was the tactile aspect of it. Seeing as I do so much work on a screen, it was refreshing to work with prints and frames. Another job I did was to help out with some film scanning. This wasn't a project that was given to me, it was someone else's job, but the quantity was becoming a bit overwhelming, so any help was appreciated. I offered my help straight away because I was really curious to see the scanning setup that they use. The project was an exhibition and a book about this Austrian street and documentary photographer. The Vorderhof had boxes full of his original 35mm negatives from the 70s, which had been numbered and selected prior to my beginning of work, and so I was asked to help with the scanning of the selected photographs, which were then to be printed for the exhibition and the book. This was a lot of fun for me. I was fascinated by the highly professional archival methods that were used to keep all the negatives organized, and the great scanning setup. I got to work with this huge high-end Hasselblad scanner, which is far beyond the quality of my personal scanning setup, so I found it quite enjoyable to scan in this professional manner. Something else I did in my internship was simply help out where I could with either simple tasks such as carrying things around or building up tables, or tasks that were a bit more specific to my knowledge. So for example, I helped out with the preparations for an upcoming event that required some technical work with a camera that needed to be rigged and then send a signal over to a screen for a sort of live stream. Then there was one job, or project I might call it, that consumed most of my time and effort during the internship. Already in the first week of my work, I got introduced to this project that the Fort Wolf was working on. It was a pretty big exhibition that required a bit more work than most other exhibitions they do, I think. The exhibition was going to be a projector exhibition in a dark room with five projectors. The idea was to invite every artist who had ever had an exhibition in the Vorderhof in the past 40 years to send us up to 20 photographs which would be featured in this projection exhibition. Each artist would get a 1 minute time slot so that each photograph is shown for only 10 seconds and after 1 minute a different artist continues. I was introduced to this project and got a somewhat important position. Basically, a colleague of mine and I did all the digital preparations for the exhibition and for a folder that was going to be printed for the exhibition. More than 160 artists sent us a range of photos that were then resized and prepared in a format for the print and for the guy who was going to program the projection. After that, I got introduced to the printer, which is not just any old printer, but a big professional printer that is capable of printing fine art prints. I was very excited to get to know this machine, and fortunately I was assigned to do the rest of the print work for the exhibition. So there were basically two things that needed to be printed. Firstly, the folder, with each page dedicated to one artist, so that's like a book with over 160 pages, and I was going to print each page individually, flatten them in the heater, and cut them accordingly. Secondly, we planned to have a corner beside the main exhibition where we presented a book from each artist, if we had a book of theirs. We had around 60 or 70 books or so I think, and each of those needed a semi-transparent cover with the artist's initials printed on them, and so that was pretty much the last job I did before the exhibition was opened. I prepared the digital files for the prints, printed and cut the covers and wrapped the books in them. While some of my colleagues seemed to pity me because I got this job that is so repetitive, I actually really enjoyed it. As mentioned before, I appreciated not working on a screen. Don't get me wrong, I strongly value that I can do so much of my work on a screen which is highly practical and effective, but that also is rather strenuous on the eyes, and so working with paper, cutting the edges precisely, and working with a huge printer and a heater was so refreshing, and I had a lot of fun doing it. On the 20th of November, the exhibition was opened and I got to see all the work from the last two and a half months come to life and people interacting with it, which was so cool and fulfilling. This was about two weeks before my internship was due to end and so this opening felt a lot like a completion of the internship. So that was my experience in my internship. It was highly valuable for me to see this different way of working with photography, and while I've got my own different career plans, I think it's good to know what possibilities there are, and the most important thing I learned was that I just should not assume to know the possibilities, and instead understand that there are probably so many other unique ways out there to work in the space of artistic photography that I just don't know about yet, which I find pretty exciting. 
that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed this little story from the end of last year. If you happen to know any other unique ways of working in the photography space, please leave a comment. Anyway, if you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a like. Consider subscribing if you haven't yet, and I'll see you again next week in the next video. Until then, goodbye.